Welcome, everybody, to another edition of TalkingWithHeroes.com talk show program. That's www.talkingwithheroes.com and our online news site, www.thankyoufoyourservice.us. And I'm here with Ron Link, a retired Army uh, Ranger, videographer. Um, you've all been uh, hearing that we're making another trip to Iraq and Afghanistan. Well, we're here now. We are in Iraq. And I want to say thank you to Embry Riddle Aeronautical University. That's embryriddle.edu. And Mark Leiden with Veterans Do This Get Hired book, uh, do this get hired uh, Mark introduced me to Embry Riddle uh, because we were looking for sponsors to make this trip. And we're here. Thank you to Embry Riddle for making this trip possible. And uh, we're here right now. Uh, we got here in Baghdad uh, uh, yesterday. I left Kuwait. From the, with the heat and all that, it's like welcome back to the to the Kuwait and Iraq. It's, it's real hot here, and uh, we made it to Baghdad, and everything has happened so fast. Uh, we got into Baghdad, and um, we ended up uh, going on a convoy uh, to another location, actually back to Kalsu, and then on a helicopter ride with uh, Colonel Gerber, who you'll all hear from a little while, a little later. And uh, right now, we are here at Camp Echo. It's in Daiwaniya, I believe I pronounced that right. Daiwaniya, uh, okay, Iraq. And uh, our, this is our first interview, folks, here from this 2011 trip to Iraq. And you are going to hear some incredible progress stories. You're going to hear from some incredible American service people serving our country over here. And uh, almost fitting to me, uh, because I live in faith with this project, uh, after we get sponsors and everything to do what I do. Uh, we are starting our program at a place called Peace Chapel here on the base and uh, we're here with the third ACR and uh, at a Fort Hood, Texas. So I'd like to introduce without any further ado uh, Captain Angel Berrios. He is the chaplain here for third squadron, third ACR. Welcome sir to Talking With Heroes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you don't mind to get us started um, just kind of look at the camera a little bit and uh, just talk to people. Tell them who you are. Um, your story is fascinating already, just a little bit what you told me. Uh, talk a little bit about your background, first of all. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Chaplain Angel Berrios. Um, I am what you call squadron chaplain. Uh, my squadron is 3rd uh, uh, Squadron Thunder uh, for 3rd ACR. Of course, we're stationed out of Fort Hood, uh, Fort Hood Texas. Uh, a little bit about my story, uh, as I mentioned to you, just about uh, just over two years ago, I joined. The, uh, well, I was commissioned as an officer in the army, and uh, and I was 44 years old when I when I did that. And of course, the question is, why did I do it so late in life? Well, it's a long story. Uh, basically, my dad was in the army 20 years, and two years in Vietnam. I graduated from Meade Senior High School in Fort Meade, Maryland. So the military life has always been a part of my life, and I understand it from a a dependent uh, perspective. And uh, when I graduated from college um, back uh, in the 80s, uh, one of the first places I went to uh, was an Army recruiter, and that's when I found out that I had to uh, further my education to become a chaplain in the Army. And so I did. I began to uh, uh, take classes, my master's degree and so forth, and, uh, and I was, well, I was, I was in, well into um, uh, completing it or doing it and completing some of it. And so what happened was uh, I stopped for, for some reasons, and then uh, in 2001, September 11th, uh, when all that happened, of course, then I began uh, for uh, continued my education. Um, and uh, it was 44, I was 44 years old by the time I completed all of that, all the, the necessary education uh, to become a chaplain in the Army, but at, at that point I thought I was too old. Um, but I was told otherwise by an uh, uh, Army Reserve chaplain and I made one phone call to an Army uh, chaplain recruiter, and uh, basically uh, I'm here after that phone call. So you didn't just start being a chaplain, though. Uh, t talk about your story of 23 years. Ah, 23 years. For 23 years, I was a full-time evangelist. Uh, I was an itinerant evangelist, meaning I traveled basically the world. I've been to 42 countries and 42 states. I speak Spanish fluently uh, also, so I preached both in both languages, uh, both home and abroad. 
And uh, basically, as an evangelist, what I would do is I was, I was a guest speaker every Sunday for 23 years. Uh, guest speaker uh, as pastors, uh, youth pastors, and missionaries would invite me to their locations. And uh, again, I would be a guest speaker, and I would just um, um, share God's Word in each location that I went to. Everything, uh, venues of, uh, of ministry included uh, conferences, uh, conventions, seminars, uh, retreats, rallies, regular churches, uh, you know, uh, if you go to Latin America, they got the the um, campaign, the yellow white tents that I would preach under, and so forth. So, yeah, situations like that are is what I would preach at. Do you have a family? Um, I'm single. single? Okay. Yeah, I have my parents. They live in uh, in the Mar- in Maryland. Okay. So uh, you just really arrived here? What? And it's, did you say September? Correct. Um, of course, uh, we we all, we all go through Kuwait first. And I, in August, we arrived in Kuwait, and then I actually, I actually arrived here in September of 2010. That's correct. And we've been here, of course, ever since. Okay. Talk about your ministry here. Talk about what you do, maybe even almost on a daily basis. Um, well, uh, what I do as a chaplain, um, I, the way I explain it to people, my, my, my responsibilities are twofold. Uh, if you notice on my uniform, I have my cross over my last name. And I have my, my rank on my chest. Uh, so that kind of explains what I do. Um, I'm what you call special staff um, uh, in that uh, I'm special because I'm a chaplain. And so I have my chaplain responsibilities and I have my staff responsibilities. Okay, and my, my chaplain responsibilities is basically pastoral, counseling, preaching, teaching, um, you know, ministering to soldiers. That's my, my uh, pastoral cross responsibility. My staff, or captain's responsibility, is my uh, responsibility to the staff, uh, to the commander, and and uh, and and uh, you know meetings and so forth, and other uh, plannings that I'm, I'm I do with with uh, the staff here. And when you say uh, ministering to all soldiers, you're talking about pretty much all faiths, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, of course, in chaplain school, we're we're instructed and guided on how to do that. Um, but even so. Um, it's it's uh, it's part of the army. It's part of serving our country, and uh, and I would just like to say that uh, uh, my me being in the army is uh, is more than a career. It's more than a career. It's a calling, and more than a job. It's a ministry, and uh, and that keeps when I keep that in mind, or when a chaplain keeps that in mind, he he, he doesn't lose focus and perspective in terms of the kingdom of God. Okay, you have a pretty big chapel here. How, how many can you see? Uh, I guess we can seat about 60 to 70 here comfortably, and we do, uh, uh, not in our services. Our services, we, we average around 25, um, 20 to 25. Our, our record was just the other day uh, at 35. We hit 35, and before that it was 31. Um, so, yeah, that's how many we seat here. So do you have Bible studies and other uh, activities for them? And you talked about counseling, too. As a matter of fact, somebody came in for counseling a little while ago. Correct, correct. Um, uh, basically, my responsibilities here at the chapel are mainly threefold, uh, maybe four. Um, what I do uh, every Sunday, every Sunday, I'm the only chap- chaplain for many months. For most of the time here, I'm, I've been the only chaplain here at uh, Fob Echo. Okay? And uh, basically, I would preach every Sunday. And in preaching every Sunday, um, you know, I would, uh, of course, uh, in the first part of it, I, I preached uh, from the book of Revelation, strictly from the book of Revelation, up until December. And then I started doing Christmas messages, and then I felt God leading me another route from January to presently. And uh, so that's every Sunday. And, and basically, Sundays, Sundays consist of a 11 o'clock service and a 1900 service, okay? And then uh, what I do is uh, at 9 o'clock every Sunday morning, we have what we call an ecumenical um, service, where basically we do Catholic reading or liturgical reading. And, uh, and that's really interesting to me because I'm Assembly of God, Pentecostal Assembly of God background. Uh, that's my endorser. And so that's totally out of my league to do that. But I do it for the soldiers in that basically we do readings and we do prayers. And uh, again, it, that's at 9 o'clock every Sunday morning. And then 11 o'clock is here. Uh, LDS or Mormon services, they have their services at 1300. Um, and then the Kenyans, uh, we have Kenyans here. Uh, they, they, they do our guards. They, <clears throat> they, guard our, they, they, they guard our facilities and so forth. But they have, oh, I, I think maybe there's 50 of them here on the FOB. And they have their own services uh, 
uh, Sunday morning also. I think at 9 they meet here. Uh, so that's Sundays. As far as Wednesdays is when we have our Bible studies. In our Bible studies, what I decided to do is I decided to go from Genesis to Revelation uh, from September to presently. And I, I did. So what we did, we began in uh, September, we began in the old, we old uh, survey of the Old Testament, and then Genesis all the way through uh, the end of the Old Testament chronologically, which would be Ezra, Esther, and Nehemiah. Once we ended there, 444 B.C., we did, a cla we did one Wednesday where we just talked about the intertestamental period, 400 years before, between uh, Malachi and Matthew, and then we did Introduction to the New Testament, and then uh, each book of the New Testament um, up until now. Now, we will finish Revelation um, the last Wednesday of, uh, of July. Right before you start packing up. Right before we start packing up, exactly. <clears throat> now, um, we also have other activities uh, here at the chapel. On Monday nights and uh, Thursday nights, we have videos that we show um, stuff like... Um, uh, evolution slash creation seminars or the book of Revelation Megiddo um, our founding fathers videos that uh, we get we get a good turnout on Mondays and Thursday nights my my assistant he's basically in charge of all that your assistant you mean the new chaplain you, you, no, uh, no. you, you were telling me earlier you, you got another chaplain here yeah well actually the the way it works here uh, in the army we have what we call uh, the the chaplain and his assistant who's an nco my assistant is Sar sergeant grill um we are called rst we're we're the religious support team uh back at garrison we're called umt the unit ministry team but for some reason they call us the religious support team here and so he is my assistant he's been with me at this time, and so he takes care of all the NCO stuff and a lot of the legs. Uh, it puts everything into action. Uh, as far as the other chaplain that I mentioned to you, Chaplain Morrison and his assistant, Sergeant Burns, uh, they have been at another location the entire time until like maybe three, four weeks ago. Um, and so he's presently not here, uh, but he's, he also works with me uh, as of maybe three weeks ago. He's been kind of helping me out also. That's great. We talked uh, earlier about care packages, mm -hmm. and um, you have an area in the back here where they come in, and you, you were telling me how quickly they, they go out. Yeah. Uh, we here at, at Fob Echo and, and in the Army, of course, we so appreciate the care packages that are uh, sent to us uh, by our folks back home, by our family and friends back home, churches and so forth. And they always put a little note in there expressing their appreciation. Of course, they got uh, elementary uh, elementary uh, uh, children, you know, uh, leaving little notes to us, thanking us for our service and so forth. Uh, and and uh, by default, from the post office, care packages come here. Uh, if there's no name or nowhere it goes, it just arrives here. It arrives, it comes here. And then I even tell soldiers uh, around the FOB, if uh, you know they have too much care package stuff, just bring it at the chapel, and we'll take care of it. And we set it up right back over there. And uh, it goes quick. It goes quick. Certain items that go quick. Chocolate. We love fun-sized or bite-sized chocolates, okay? Uh, and uh, Twizzlers go real quick. Uh, of course, the toiletries go quick. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we, we enjoy all the care packages. Just keep them coming. That's what I say. And you get letters, too, and children with drawings? Exactly. Letters, notes of, uh, of appreciation, of prayers. I, one, one thing I tell the soldiers, I remind the soldiers all the time here, is people back home are praying for us. God answers our prayers. We, uh, we, we've been kept from God knows how many uh, situations that we've been spared. I really believe. I believe God answers our prayers more than we realize it. And so... Uh, as folks are praying for us back home, we so appreciate it and we so want, we need that. We need God's prayers. I mean, your, your prayers.